Paul Rosenblum is a bookkeeper, not an accountant or a CPA. Although the information comes from accounting professionals, the information in this podcast is meant to give you enough good information to have a conversation and dialogue with your tax professional about subjects discussed on this podcast. Now that you've decided on the kind of entity your business will be, or in some cases already is, one of the next steps is to figure out how you're going to account for your business behind the scenes financially. With startup expenses, you can use a spreadsheet or any other kind of organized way of being able to track the money that either you invest into your own company or things that you purchase for your company before you either have an entity or you make your your very first sale. However, once you have an entity and you are on your way to making your first sale, you should be using regular accounting software. These days, online cloud-based software is generally more popular than the desktop versions, but doing accounting online certainly isn't for every person or every company. The most popular of the accounting software in the U.S. is called QuickBooks. QuickBooks Desktop has been around since 1994 when we were all using Windows 3.1. It's come out every single year since then with additional features and improvements. And until recently, you can use the desktop software year after year after year if you don't hook the software up to your bank to download bank or credit card transactions, or do your own payroll using their own add-on module. Other than those couple of things, one can use the desktop software for years for bookkeeping purposes. I still have clients on QuickBooks 2015, 2016, 2017, versions that that are five and six and seven years old, and they work just fine, even with Windows 10 and Windows 11. However, starting in 2022, the desktop editions of QuickBooks is now a subscription software. Every year, to be able to continue to get into your own company file, the annual fee has to be paid to QuickBooks. Even though it's a desktop software, they're using the online cloud-based model. Since the desktop versions of QuickBooks have been around so long, there are more complete software than most of the cloud-based versions. In short, there's more reports, more customizations, and more features are included with the bottom line basic desktop version than even the middle-priced online version. QuickBooks Desktop has two main different versions. One is called QuickBooks Pro, which is the basic, most common version, which allows up to three users logged in at the same time doing different things if you purchase three different licenses. Then we have the QuickBooks Premier, five different versions of the Premier, and it also allows five users logged in at the same time doing different things if you purchase five different licenses. The first of the Premier is called the Retail Premier. Retail is designed for small retail operations, customized mainly in reports, so you can get specific reports that retail stores need. Then we have the most common of all the Premiers, the Contractor Edition, which is very, very good for change orders in construction. So as you're nearing an end of a job, if there's an add-on or there's a change order of some kind, you can add that to the original invoice that you create for that particular customer or client. And it also has very, very specific reports that you can't get in any other edition of QuickBooks. And most of those reports have to do with expenses per project that you're doing sorted in very specific ways. 
Then we have manufacturing. The manufacturing edition allows you to track the raw material that you purchase to be put together to make finished items that you then sell from your inventory. So it tracks the whole manufacturing process from buying a raw piece of material and putting it together, manufacturing it, and then creating the finished item that then gets deducted from your inventory. So it's one big giant step up in the inventory module in the manufacturing premiere. The professional edition is very good for doctors and attorneys because their invoicing is a little bit different usually than a lot of other companies. And again, the reports are a little bit uh, customized and specific to that particular profession. Then we have the nonprofit. The nonprofit edition changes all of the terminology. So rather than getting a profit and loss report that you get with all the other versions, the nonprofit premier gives you the same report, but it's called a statement of income and expenses because obviously a nonprofit is not a for-profit business. So the word profit is out of the equation. They change the terminology from customer or client for your income to donor because a, a donor is how the money comes into a nonprofit. So all of the terminology all over the software is changed for a nonprofit organization. The accountant's edition, which is what I have and many, many accountants use, that version incorporates all of the above. So I have one software and I can get all of the reports from a nonprofit, all of the reports from a professional, all of the reports from a manufacturing, contractor, or retail version. I have it all in one menu and I can get the same reports that my client gets. So if they want me to look at something or if I need to look at something that I can only get with that particular premiere, then I'm able to do that. All of the desktop editions are very robust pieces of software that enable forms and reports to be exported directly to your Outlook client so that you can easily send them from your own email as well as through Gmail or any web-based mail. They also have a lot of customizing of reports and invoices and other forms, as well as in the accountant edition only, a report maker that lets you 100% completely, not just customize, but create financial reports for banks and or investors who may want to see the books in a very specific and professionally looking way. I have been using QuickBooks desktop since around 1996 and still prefer the desktop to the cloud-based versions. However, I have dozens of clients who use the online version and I go into their files daily or weekly online on a regular basis. The online or the cloud-based versions are divided into five different editions, self-employed, Simple Start, Essentials Plus, and Advanced. The self-employed is designed for a very small one-person operation. It even reminds you of when to pay estimates quarterly. But the reports don't look like, in my humble opinion, very professional. But it is a way of tracking income and expenses in a very minimal way, enough to file taxes on April 15th. The next step up is called Simple Start. This version includes invoices so that now you can bill your clients. It also has a way of tracking sales tax, creating estimates, and reports that are in much more of a business format. The Essentials, one step up, adds two more users. So now you have a total of three users who can log in at the same time using their own email addresses. You also have the ability to enter bills from your vendors as well as time tracking. The plus edition adds two more users, so now you have a total of five. It also adds inventory control 
and individual project profit and loss reports. It also adds more customization to reports and more filtering of those reports. The advanced online version adds analytics using Excel, lots of graphs and reports not available in any other version, and very specific customization for each user login based on what their roles are with the company, as well as a way of restoring data from a previous time if there's a problem. There is a desktop version of the advanced online, which has been around for many years, called Enterprise. And that's the top of the totem pole still for the QuickBooks software. That has advanced inventory features, barcoding, warehouse accounting, and tested up to 30 users logged in at the same time doing different things on a large network. If you're thinking about Enterprise, think Oracle, which has been around for years uh, for large companies needing a large accounting system. Other accounting systems include Sage, which used to be Peachtree, NetSuite, Wave, Zoho, FreshBooks, and Xero, spelled X-E-R-O, which is highly popular in the UK and some other countries. All of the above that I just mentioned are all cloud-based accounting software. Each software has its pros and cons, which is why they all give you a free trial so that you can look at the features and play with it to see if it's the right system for you and your business. I have clients using Zoho internally to track the invoices and the payments against those invoices that clients make so that they know who owes them and how much they owe. So even though they're in a cash basis in accounting and bookkeeping, from what I do and what the accountant does for them, they still invoice clients, which makes them internally on an accrual basis. The next episode, by the way, will be accrual versus cash-based systems, what the differences are and the pros and cons to each. So stay tuned for the next episode. Many of my clients never want to or have the need to go into their own books. They know that at the end of every month when the bookkeeping is done, I will send them balance sheets and profit and loss reports and any other report that they happen to to want or need. In those cases, why use the online version, which is a monthly subscription price, which in some cases can be $800 a year or more, if only your bookkeeper is going to log on on a regular basis and nobody else. When I use an online version for a client, generally it's because the client wants to log in and see their books, run their own reports, look at the daily numbers, such as in a restaurant or a bar, and is computer savvy enough to understand how to accept the customer payment manually so that when I'm doing the bookkeeping and I'm using the downloads from the online banking section, the two transactions will match up correctly. I plead with them not to change anything that I do. They can look, but don't touch. If we have meetings with the accountant or CPA and need to collaborate, it's great that all of us can log in at the same time, even without a Zoom call. In summary, here are the six pros of QuickBooks Desktop. Number one, It's just more robust in every way, including the customization of reports and the filtering of the information that you get out in reports. It also is much more robust in customizing invoice forms, sales order forms, purchase order forms, and most of the other forms that you use on a regular basis in QuickBooks Desktop. Number two, you are not relying on how fast or reliable your internet speed or your connection to the internet is. Number three, you're not relying on the software company's server working or not, or hiccuping or slowing down or whatever the technical issue might be. Number four, you have virtually no limit on the categories in your chart of accounts. 
and I'm talking about assets, liability, equity, income, cost of goods, and expenses. It limits you, if you want to call it a limit, of 9,999 accounts on your chart of accounts with most of the desktop versions. The online versions of QuickBooks limit you to 250 accounts. Number five, you're in total control of your backups locally using a flash drive or anywhere that you want to save your, your the backup of, of QuickBooks, including your local network. And number six, some versions, like the accountant's version, has a, what's called a report writer where you can customize your financials from scratch. The pros of the online or the cloud-based editions of QuickBooks are, number one, they are always on, even if you are logged off, which allow you to pre-program customer invoices to be emailed even if you're on vacation so the business can keep on running financially. Number two, the integration with your POS and Square, Stripe, Amex, and lots of other third-party applications if you want to download transactions, and inventory from third-party software. And I'm not so sure that's a pro or a con, but more about that in subsequent episodes. Number three, multi-users can log in at the same time for no extra cost. You don't have to buy extra licenses. You don't have to do any kind of a computer or network setup. Number four, specific entries that accountants might make to adjust the books at the end of the year are sometimes a little bit easier using the online editions than the desktop editions. These, I'm talking about specific entries that have to do with accounts receivable adjustments and accounts payable adjustments in the same entry. And number five, downloading of credit card and bank transactions with a very good interface with the online editions of QuickBooks. Desktop can do that, but with a different look and a different interface that I don't like nearly as much. I decided to go through the QuickBooks software since it's what I use every day and have been using for 20 plus years, less than that for the online editions because they're a lot newer. But again, take a look at some of the other software that's available. Some are free, some are low costing, but there is a lot to choose from. Every situation is different. And when I start with a new client, we always have a conversation as to which way to go and what would work best for the client. It's not about what I want necessarily, it's what the client wants and what the client needs. And now for the client story of the week. I had a new client who was using QuickBooks Online when I started doing their bookkeeping. I noticed when I was going through the database that some transactions were in a different format than others. As it turned out, the client told me that they started with the desktop edition, migrated to the online edition, didn't like it after about six months, went back to the desktop version, and about a year and a half later decided to go back to the online version one last time. It was a lot of work for me to clean up the database for a consistent look even though the numbers and the finances were matching the tax return for every year. At this point, it's been about three years, and we've stuck with the online edition because it's really working for them after I cleaned it up and I'm using the online banking feature in the proper way and other features in the proper way. I also have had a few clients over the past several years who were using QuickBooks Online And a year or more later, I wasn't able to create another expense account on the chart of accounts because I hadn't realized, but we had reached the 250 account limit. For these particular clients, it was important that we had very specific accounts to track expenses. So we had to migrate back to the desktop edition since the company was small to medium size and really couldn't afford 
or they didn't need a lot of the QuickBooks advanced online features and the cost that was attached to it. I hope I've helped you in making an informed decision about which way to go with your accounting software. Online accounting isn't for everyone. Desktop accounting isn't for everyone. This is why we still at this point have a choice in which way to go with accounting software. If you have any questions or comments about this podcast, please email me at bookkeepermensch at gmail.com or numerex at numerexonline.com. Next week, we'll talk about accrual versus cash-based accounting. Until next time, I'm Paul Rosenblum.